So, hi, hi everyone. Um, good morning, and uh, I hope I will not waste your lunch time. So, uh, let's start. So, uh, I'm Jiao Yan. I'm from the uh, University of Manchester, and uh, we have another course from the University of Oxford. So, uh, this is about uh, um, embedding for ontology of the signal logic. So, um, thanks for the first presentation um, by Yi Zhen. So, uh, he has already introduced what is ontology, so I can save some time. So ontology have been widely used in a lot of places, and you may have already heard these ontologies, especially um, the gene ontology, which is widely used in AI for science. And on the web, there is schema.org. Right, so um, so what, what is ontology? So ontology is uh, to formally and explicitly and to represent the knowledge of a domain. And uh, such knowledge should be shared uh, between agents, right? So uh, to this end, we, um, we need some uh, formal language. So one popular formal language is web ontology language. And uh, this language is proposed by W3C. Um, it's, it's widely used for defining all kinds of ontologies. And uh, uh, especially this language can support discrete logic, which can uh, model um, logical relationship between high level concepts. Let's see uh, several examples. Uh, so you see here are three examples from uh, the toy uh, family ontology. So, um, so first, uh, we can define um, subsumption between different concepts. We can also define more complex logic operations like conjunction, uh, parent in conjunction with uh, male is, is, is father, right? And we can define extension quantification. A child is some person uh, who had who had parent of, of father. And uh, there's another real world example um, from the food ontology. Uh, for example, we can define um, the food concept as the conjunction of envir environmental uh, material and uh, something that has a role in food. Right. So um, in this work, we focus on the fragment of EL++. And uh, this is the formal definition of EL++. So giving a signature of name the concepts, uh, name the roles, and name the individuals, we can recursively um, define complex concepts with the uh, top, the, with the button, with the conjunction, and with the extension quantification, and with the nomina, which is to define a concept with one specific uh, uh, individual. And it also allows the role composition and the role inclusion. So, um, why we um, consider the ER++ because uh, it keeps a good uh, balance between expressivity and the reasoning complexity. So it is widely used in all kinds of ontologies. And uh, it has uh, polynomial time complexity in reasoning. And uh, this discrete logic uh, fragment corresponds to the profile of OI to EL. So yeah, let's take a brief look at this toy example about the family. So, uh, you have already seen uh, this axon and the extension quantification, and uh, this is the uh, row inclusion. So has parent is a sub row of related to, and this is T box, and uh, the ontology usually also have uh, A box, which define um, some kind of data. For example, the membership um, of a specific person, which, um, for example, Alex, which uh, who is uh, who is uh, an instance of father. And the row assertion has a parent, uh, Bob and Alex, uh, which is equivalent to uh, relational facts represented as widely used, widely represented in knowledge graph. So uh, thanks to the second presenter, and uh, he has already introduced the knowledge graph embedding, so I can save some time to introduce knowledge graph embedding. Briefly, it is to represent uh, uh, entity and relations in a knowledge graph composed of relational facts. So their uh, triples are kept in the vector space. So this example of chance E, um, yeah, let's quickly pass. So um, based on the idea of knowledge graph embedding, we are considering uh, whether we can do similar things for uh, ontology of discrete logic. So for uh, there are quite a few uh, works on, um, on ontology of discrete logic, ER++. Actually, this is quite more um, complex than uh, representing uh, relational facts because it, all, it has not only um, instance and relational facts, but also more complex uh, hierarchical um, concepts. So the, the original works in this piece uh, try to uh, represent the concept as, as a ball, 
then, um, but uh, the weakness is that uh, the intersection of two balls is no longer a ball, so it can't deal with uh, concept conjunction. And then uh, some people think, okay, why not? Why not? Why don't we uh, represent concept as a box? And the intersection of box is perfectly still a, a box. So, but uh, yeah, this is a good piece of work. There, there have been quite good works, but. Uh, Currently, uh, this uh, direction is still under exploration. For example, uh, with the previous works haven't uh, uh, explored um, more complex uh, relations that uh, is one to many or many to one or many to many. So uh, this work, uh, our method box two square EL follows this this direction, and uh, we try to model concept as a box, and we try to model instance as point. So with this representation, we can already model um, concept subassumption and the concept intersection and the membership, right? And then how about the more complex uh, logical relationship between concepts? So for example, C subclass of extension RD, how do we deal with this? So we think up uh, an idea, which is to uh, represent the relation by not a vector, but uh, two boxes, one box for the the head area of the relation and one box for the tail, tail um, area of the relation. And we also think up uh, so-called bumper vector. So this is to model the interaction of one concept to another concept. So in this example, um, after, the in after the impact of the concept D, uh, the box of C is still in the header area of the, should, be, should still be in the header area of the relation. So, well, um, this figure, the right, the right figure shows uh, expect what ex expected representation, what we want, right? We can see an example. So let's see this extension quantification. So uh, the the child, the child box, the child box is impacted by the um, bumper vector of father, and uh, um, after the impact, it should still be in the head box of the relation has um, parent. Of course, to get to this representation, we need um, optimization. We need, need learning algorithms. So we uh, first, so uh, we need uh, these uh, two steps. One step is we need to pre-process pre ontology. Two steps, two sub steps in pre-processing the ontology. So one is we need to transform the A box and transform the A box axons into equivalent T box axons using nomina. So the instance A is represented as the nominal concept of A. So uh, we can we can we can transform the sub the membership into subassumption, and we can also transform the row assertion into an extension quantification. So the second step is normalization. Uh, we uh, we use some existing uh, reasoner to uh, normalize all the complex algorithms into basic forms. So here we count the six. Actually, in uh, year uh, plus plus ontology, we can normalize all the algorithms into six forms. Um, so with the algorithms of all kinds of forms, we define a um, loss function for each algorithm, for algorithms of each form. But before we introduce um, the loss function, we need to learn something about some um, basic operations over the box. So one operation is the distance of two boxes. Two boxes, so uh, we define this distance. So um, well, we can, um, I can show you uh, in the post session, but uh, just remember uh, this distance is equal or larger to zero if two boxes are disjoint. Otherwise, um, if, they, if it's less than zero, then uh, the two boxes are overlapped. And uh, we also define um, box containment, so to, um, to calculate uh, whether um, two boxes are contain, whether two boxes contain each other. So with these two, to operations, we can we can define a loss function for each um, or each uh, kind of algorithm. So let's just say uh, one example. So uh, let's say normal form of C conjunction of D is, is subsumed by E. So we can say uh, we can calculate the intersection of two boxes. Uh, you can imagine um, the the uh, the lower the left lower um, corner of one box and the right. Um, uh, the right uh, um, upper corner of another box becomes um, becomes the intersection, and this intersection is uh, is contained in, in D, right? So we can calculate such loss function. So, well, 
in principle, we do not need uh, to have negative samples. We can optimize, but on large scale ontologies to um, accelerate training, we sync up some uh, negative exons. Briefly, we uh, for a positive extension quantification, we uh, randomly replace either C or D to get the negative um, extension quantification. So, okay, uh, we uh, we can. Um, see a bit about the evaluation. So one evaluation, uh, which is very interesting to see, but perhaps useless, is <laughs> uh, virtualization of the toy ontology. We uh, set the dimension to, to two, and we do not use negative sampling, and we use a virtualization loss. We can find that uh, our method, box square EL, actually shows a very beautiful and decent uh, 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 representation of the two dimension boxes. So. Yes, and the second experiment we do is to, uh, sub to do subsumption prediction. We split the axons of each ontology into 80% for training and 10% uh, for validation and 10% for testing. And uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can predict uh, whether the existing axons can, whether we can use the existing axon to train model and predict uh, the, um, the missing axons, which is quite useful in ontology uh, engineering. And uh, of course, the performance looks quite decent. And uh, we also have do we also did uh, um, the prediction of um, axons entailed. So uh, we also did uh, some experiment on protein-protein uh, protein interaction, and uh, um, this is transformed into um, into the prediction of the. Um, um, a special extension quantification, and uh, we use the gene ontology as the T box, and we use the string database of PPI as the A box to compose one ontology and to do uh, to predict uh, whether such um, such um, uh, extension quantification algorithm exist. If exist, then P one and P two has some interaction, and uh, as well, um, you can see the result here. So, yeah, let's uh, um, finish this talk. So. Uh, Yes, we propose a sound representation to represent uh, an ontology of this technology E R plus plus. In the paper, we have um, proving of the soundness of this representation, and uh, this representation is based on um, two boxes: one box for concept and one box for um, relations. And uh, we have done a comprehensive evaluation. Yeah. So finally, uh, some points uh, for the for the future or some perspectives. The so one is uh, how to support the other uh, features of discrete logic. The second is uh, the real world ontologies are definitely more than uh, formal semantics, but also other uh, semantics like the uh, literal, textual literals, even images in ontology and the application. So why we do this work? Uh, it's just for interest or it's whether it's really useful, we need to find this application well, from our interest to industry. So the post is tomorrow, and uh, we are coming to my post. Thank you.